What is up guys, this is Luke Hill for Kit Guru. We've already reviewed the Solentium PC Ferro 5 dual CPU cooler. We were thoroughly impressed by what Solentium PC as a relative newcomer offered to the market. This time though, we're looking at the roughly 50 pound Fortis 5, and this is a single fan version, and we're looking at the roughly 55 pound Fortis 5 dual, and of course, that's a dual fan version. So anyway, that's enough for the introduction. Let's take a closer look at the Solentium PC Fortis 5 CPU cooler. Before we do that though, if you like what we do here at KitGuru, make sure you give us a like and subscribe, follow us on social media, interact with us in all the usual ways, and please do check out the main written KitGuru website. That supports us a lot. Let's get back into it. Now I will point out that both of these coolers are basically the same, just the dual fan version comes with an extra fan. So let's take a first look at the actual heatsink itself for the Fortis 5 or Fortis 5 dual. Solentium PC utilizes a standard aluminium fin array and chooses not to coat the fins to change their color. There's a black plastic top shroud for some added visual pizzazz though. Fin spacing is not particularly dense, so there are some clear signs of this heatsink being designed for low noise operation with low speed fans rather than high speed high pressure fans. And the heatsink is clearly very asymmetric by design, but there is identification on which side is which, so the flat side on the front or near dim side. Dimensions wise, the fin array is 159 millimeters tall by 144 millimeters wide by 82 millimeters thick. Though it doesn't fill that entire thickness dimension because of the curved backside shape of the fin array. Running through the aluminium fin array are six six millimeter nickel plated copper heat pipes. And of course these are nickel plated for, well, a better look I guess, but also for some enhanced resistance to corrosion and the likes. But when we go down to the heat pipe direct touch base, that is actually just ground down to bare copper for enhanced thermal transfer. And then the heat pipes themselves are actually in an offset orientation to try and distribute heat around the fin array a little bit better, perhaps a little bit more balanced. By default, the Fortis 5 comes with a Fluctus 140 fan, and then the Fortis 5 Dual adds another Fluctus 120 fan on top of that. The Fluctus 140 PWM fan operates at 300 to 1400 RPM, which is an impressive control range, even if somewhat moderate speed at the top end. And the Fluctus 120 PWM fan on the Fortis 5 Dual also runs at 300 to 1400 RPM, which is indeed quite slow at the top end for a 120 millimeter blower. Importantly, those low speed values for the fans give them really good ability to run in semi-passive mode if your motherboard header supports it. And that is something that I personally quite like, the ability to really spool down the fans when you don't need the cooling potential, but then quickly ramp up the speed when you do need that cooling prowess. Both of the fans actually use a fluid dynamic bearing and Silentium PC quotes mean time between failure of 100,000 hours, which is impressive. And because of those key characteristics, Silentium does actually back the entire cooler with a six year warranty, which for something like Noctua or something would be you know, quite commonplace, but around about 50 pounds, 55 pounds, that's a good warranty, I'm impressed there. In terms of mounting, the initial step is really easy. The mounting hardware is easy to install. Threaded standoffs are screwed into the default AM4 backplate before metal mounting plate is screwed into position. Thermal paste can then be applied before the cooler is sat and screwed into its position. And then the fans can be attached via their metal clips. And you can daisy chain the fan connectors if you're short on motherboard headers. The 140 actually features an additional header to power the 120 in a dual fan operation. The final mount is secure and it does look good in my opinion, especially with that black plastic top panel, which doesn't really serve anything other than, I guess, aesthetic appearance. And thanks to the cooler's asymmetric and offset design, there is plenty of room for graphics cards. Tall memory modules stand a slightly higher chance to fit in, though don't necessarily count on this with the biggest and baddest modules on the market. And do watch out for interference with tall VRM heat sinks on the rear IO side, especially on the dual fan version. Oh, and if you want any form of lighting on your cooler, you're gonna have to opt for the slightly more expensive 60 pounds in the UK, Silentium PC Fortis 5 ARGB version. That does, however, only come in single fan form in the UK. For testing the Silentium PC Fortis 5 and Fortis 5 Dual, we're gonna use our go-to AMD test platform. This is a Ryzen 9 5950X at stock, precision boost overdrive and overclock to a pretty conservative 4.45 gigahertz by using a hefty 1.312 volts, which is around 1.3 volts delivered and over 210 watts package power under load. 
The motherboard is a Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master with its excellent VRM. We use a Seasonic TX1000 1 kilowatt power supply for clean energy. A Gigabyte RTX 2060 Super graphics card in its zero RPM mode. And we use a Fractal Design Mesh Phi 2 chassis with four 140 millimeter chassis fans. For testing, we use a 30 minute looped run of Cinebench R23 all core and we record the steady state CPU temperature at the end of that 30 minute loop. The ambient conditions are kept between about 22 to about 24 or 25 degrees Celsius and we do compensate for this and when the window for the ambient does move outside of this zone, we will add in additional tests just to ensure the validity of our data. As always, if you want more details on our test system, our test hardware, our procedures, then check out some of our previous video reviews of CPU coolers, we've done quite a few recently, and then also do check out the main written web page on the Kikuru website, that really supports us too. Anyway, let's get into the test data. Let's start off with noise performance at 100% fan speed. This is important for getting an indication of where our performance expectations should lie based on noise output. With an all-round design focused on minimizing noise output, it comes as little surprise to see the Salentium PC Fortis 5 offering superb acoustic results. With both the single fan and dual fan versions rounding to 39 dBA, the Salentium PC Fortis 5 and Fortis 5 Dual clearly offer exceptional noise performance even at full fan speed. This is a strong testament to the quality of the included fans, albeit with a low top speed rating. Typically, we would include some reference to 40 dBA noise lock test data, but the Salentium PC Fortis 5 and Fortis 5 Dual are so quiet at 100% fan speed that this is not necessary. We only usually see this type of behaviour with mid-range level low noise coolers, so it will be interesting to see if the Fortis 5 can also handle the heat or whether the fan speeds are just too low for the required level of cooling on our overclocked AMD processor. With the data entered into our high-end CPU cooler chart, it comes as no surprise to see the Fortis 5 and Fortis 5 Dual positioned where they are, but we have to take a closer look at the results to see the true picture. All coolers operate at full fan speed in this test, so the fact that the Salentium PC's single tower units are able to somewhat keep pace with the bigger dual tower or dual fan air coolers, as well as multi-fan AIOs, is impressive. A comparison versus the Arctic Freezer 50 shows Salentium PC winning handsomely, and the Fortis 5 Dual performance isn't too far from the Noctua NHD15, on our AMD test platform. With 40 dBA noise lock performance, we do not see any change in the results from the Fortis 5 and Fortis 5 Dual as they were already below this level. However, the margins of performance deficit to some of the bigger and more expensive coolers are now squeezed. The Arctic Freezer 50 cannot handle this task and therefore drops out of our chart, and some of the 240mm all-in-ones are within touching distance of the Fortis 5 and Fortis 5 Dual's numbers when restricted to 40 dBA noise output. This shows off the low noise operating prowess of the affordable Salentium PC coolers, though that roughly £55 Deepcool AS500 Plus continues to be a formidable competitor, and the Cougar Aqua 240 is not very expensive either. Next up is the Precision Boost Overdrive set of results. Firstly, it's critical to note that small differences in the display delta temperatures are not as important for our PBO testing because the clock speed and cooling power achieved are more important metrics. PBO shows a tangible gap in performance between the Fortis 5 and Fortis 5 Dual versus the likes of the Noctua NHD15, even on our AM4 test platform. With that said, the Fortis 5 units are perfectly capable of holding their own versus the realistic competitors. Arctic's Freezer 50 is beaten comfortably, and Be Quiet's low noise optimized Shadow Rock 3 is a notable level of performance behind Salentium PC's offerings. 213 watts of Ryzen 9 5950X package power handled is a solid result by the Fortis 5. VRM cooling is absolutely fine at full fan speed, though the 40 dBA noise lock performance comparison is particularly favourable towards the Salentium PC coolers. I was a little disappointed to see the Fortis 5 Dual only drop in MOSFET temperatures by a single degree with its extra fan. This would be one factor in making me think that the upgrade from the Fortis 5 to the Fortis 5 Dual is perhaps not necessary. So I guess I should start this conclusion by saying that it looks like Salentium PC is making a lot of good decisions when it comes to its CPU cooling product range. We like the budget Ferro 5 Dual, and we also like the lower noise orientated Fortis 5 and Fortis 5 Dual that we tested today. We're going to focus our analysis in the closing thoughts on the Fortis 5 single fan version, and that's simply because we think that it's a better value product than the dual fan version, which didn't really offer a particularly high performance boost and it costs about £5 or 10% more, which yes, is not much, but it didn't really offer all that much more either. The raw cooling performance offered by the Salentium PC Fortis 5 is strong, and when factoring in impressively low noise operation, the thermal results become even more reasonable. 
plus 50 quid for this type of air CPU cooler with low noise design is actually quite acceptable in our opinion. I'd say that we can't really point the finger at too many downsides when it comes to the Fortis 5. You could probably argue that the dual fan model was a bit disappointing in its lack of notable performance improvement versus the single fan version. And perhaps performance junkies won't really value the noise balanced operation of this heatsink and fan combination, thus hoping for higher performance at this price point. The aesthetics are also basic, but that would be a positive to many people, especially those who are not interested in ARGB lighting on their cooler and will prefer to save £10 versus the RGB version. £50 for an air cooler is really getting to the point where the market is actually quite competitive. You'll sometimes even see dual tower or dual fan coolers dropping into this price level. But we feel that the Fortis 5 from Silentium PC delivers a good set of noised balanced thermal results. It's not quite the bargain the cheaper Ferro 5 dual sibling is, but I must say with the exceptional noise balanced performance, I'd say at this price point, the Fortis 5 is certainly worthy of recommendation and it's something you should look into for perhaps something like a office PC or a server or a workstation where you need competent cooling, but you just don't want a high noise output. There we have it then. That's our review of the Solentium PC Fortis 5 and the Fortis 5 Duel. Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Which of these two would you be interested in? Do you think this is a pretty good offering for the £50 price point? Or would you like to see a little bit more performance even at the compromise of noise output? Let us know in the comment section. As always, if you like this video, give us a like and subscribe. Follow our YouTube channel. Check out our other social media presence. Please do check out the written review on the Kicker website. You can buy a cool t-shirt on our merch store. You can check out our Patreon and I will see you in the next one.